I'm kind of getting the impression Doctor Strange is a little bit of a hoarder. I mean, just because it's magical junk doesn't mean it's not junk. You know what they call an artifact that only works in a pocket dimension once every 10,000 years? Uh, I don't know either, because I don't hoard junk. Good girl, Charlie. Curious. Something tells me you don't have a favorite movie. Well, we can start you out with one of my favorites. I know this entire situation's gotta suck for you. Not just the whole resurrected, chosen one thing. I get why facing Lilith won't be easy. I was 15 when I found out my mother was capital E evil. Sorry to hear you went through that. It was bad, but I learned to deal with it. It's the only way forward, right? Look, I'm glad my mother is gone, but yeah, at times I just want to hear her voice again. Some days, I'd give anything to make that happen. Makes me hate her even more. Lilith gave birth to me, but Caretaker was my true mother. Right, so your adoptive mom raised you to kill your birth mom. <laughs> You'll fit in perfectly. Uh, enough about our crappy parents. You missed out on decades of good movies. It's my solemn duty to fill this knowledge gap with the best examples I can provide. So, the first thing you need to know, the glowing briefcase is a metaphor. Can we do it again? So, what did you think of the movie? I understood more than I should. How? You've been dead for three centuries! I'm not so sure I was dead. Not exactly. I recall a deep slumber, not the void. I... I dreamt. Of what? Of everything. Much of this world is familiar to me. I know it from my dreams. Uh, that's not creepy at all. So, do you know everything? No, I... Uh, think of it like this. I know what a car is, but I have no idea how to drive. You're up to date, but not omniscient. Then I'm guessing you don't know much about me. Just what you shared earlier. You're always free to ask. Like, what's the staff of one, or who were the runaways? I had some questions about your staff. Uh, sure. Uh, but first, um, the basics. The staff of one interprets words or phrases as spells, but it can only cast a spell once. No repeats. If each magical effect is unique, do you worry you will run out of words? Not really. I only use the staff's power when I truly need it. The rest of the time, I rely on more conventional means. Like, you know, magic. I had some questions about your staff. Go for it. Can you tell me how the Staff of One functions? It's uh, blood magic, so my own blood is required to summon it. You wouldn't believe how many adhesive bandages I go through each year. What about the words you speak? They come true. Uh, kind of. And not always the way I expect. It's like making a wish, but you can never make the same wish again. 
I have some questions about your old team. The Runaways? Sure thing. Were you all heroes who banded together? No, we were normal kids. We saw each other once a year when our parents got together to reminisce. And then we found out two very disturbing things. <laughs> First, our parents were supervillains who sacrificed children to evil gods. Second, each of us had some sort of powerful birthright. Our parents wanted us to follow in their footsteps. What did you do? We ran. But eventually, we realized only the six of us could stop our parents and their dark gods, so we faced them and stopped them from destroying reality as we know it. You know, typical kid stuff. Who was on the team? At first, uh, Chase with his mad science gear, Molly, our pint-sized powerhouse, Carolina, the solar-powered sweetheart. Gert had a telepathic link to Old Lace, a genetically engineered Deinonychus from the 87th century. I handled the blood magic, though I didn't understand it much. And Alex? Uh, well, we don't talk about Alex. Where are your friends now? Molly attends Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. Carolina left Earth to marry alien nobility. Gert? She, uh, she didn't make it. After Gert passed, uh, Chase and I had a falling out. The last I heard, he and Old Lace are living at his family home in L.A. As for Alex, uh, he chose his side, and it wasn't ours. He died with our parents. I should get going. Uh, good, good timing. Um, looks like Caretaker wants to speak with you, and... Wow, I should get to bed. Time flies when you're hanging out. I'm glad to see you're using your free time productively. Looks like you're finding your way around. Maybe making some new friends. I was planning on getting some rest, but... Things are moving at a frantic pace. For all we know, I'll be landing a jet on the roof with Mr. Stark this afternoon. Not quite like it was in the good old days. To stand still is to move back. You got that one from Agatha. She used to say it all the time. I always preferred if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Used to? I am sorry. I should have had this talk with you much sooner. But you should know... Agatha, she's no longer with us. What? Th that is impossible. She was so... Fierce, indomitable, or maybe just kind to a fault. You do not have to do this. Thank you, but I do. I haven't spoken to anyone about what happened. And more so than anyone, you deserve to know. Agatha died in an accident caused by her protege, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. The Midnight Sun's latest recruit, a powerful spellcaster in her own right. Perhaps the most powerful Agatha and I had ever seen. Wanda's abilities were growing. Too quickly for my liking. Agatha was determined to help her control them. I tried to caution her, but she would not listen. There was an incident. An accident, I'm sure, but... Agatha was killed. Yes, incinerated in an instant. Not even ash to remember her by. The others were heartbroken, as was I. But I also saw the danger, the threat, if Wanda's powers were left unchecked. So I did what needed to be done. I sent Wanda away, to the Sanctum Sanctorum, to study under Doctor Strange. I know the others still harbor a great deal of resentment towards me for it. Was Wanda so different from me as a child? Was it that easy to send her away? I didn't have a choice. Wanda's powers were beyond even her own control. 
And this time I had no Agatha to help me, as I had with you. I thought she would be safe with Strange. On that part, at least, I was clearly mistaken. Ah, oh, Wanda. Agatha. It seems we've lost them both now. I conjured a small shrine to Agatha's memory on the grounds, hoping to find some solace, a way to move forward. You should pay your respects. Maybe you'll find what I couldn't. Good night, Hunter. Agatha. You always did have the most remarkable eyes, Hunter. Just like your mother's. Maybe that's why you're the first. The first? To commune with the spirits, of course. <laughs> Is this a trick of some kind? Because I am not amused. No, oh, it's no trick, dear. You're just the first to see me. By now you've heard I had a bit of trouble with my corporeal body. I actually find it quite liberating. You are dead. Always straight to the heart of things. That's my hunter. You seem strangely at ease about this whole thing. After a thousand years of living, you learn to take things in stride. Even death. And... What have you been doing all this time? Meet me by the cave just over there. You know the one. The Bloodgate? Caretaker always told me to stay away from that place. I think we can safely lift the veil on a few more of our secrets. What's the worst that can happen? What is it, Charlie? Find something? looking portal is known as a blood gate and you're the only one among us who can pass through it blood gate caretakers handiwork yes Sarah got a little overprotective after the accident with Wanda it's become something of a habit for her I have noticed that what lies beyond is meant for you as much as it ever was for her assuming you're up to the challenge that is you know I am I do, but it's always polite to ask. Ominous indeed. Not what you were expecting, is it? There was a time when the blood stood within these celestial halls to prove their worth. This particular arena belongs to a goddess who often favored Sarah, Ashtor. Sarah, 
caretaker was here? Nothing ever comes easy, dear. The Elder Gods felt their descendants needed to earn their blessings, which is why they created these trials to begin with. Trials? I should have known. This entire realm exists for that purpose. Trial by combat, with no chance of outside interference. Yes, but I may have found a loophole they never considered. Why don't you try summoning your four-legged friend? <laughs> Charlie? The old gods are responsible for a great many creations, including your faithful companion. I think even they tend to forget that. Good luck, dear. As the goddess of balance and order, Ashtor was sometimes called the giver of justice. You can expect a fair fight, or at least her idea of one. You were too weak for this fight. Your mother abandoned. Feel my call. Now that was something. To our girl, these hellhounds are nothing but mindless beasts. Don't hesitate to strike. They certainly won't. Once again. Good girl, Charlie. Oh, and you too, Hunter. You finish this trial, but don't worry. The other gods are waiting. this place. But it's your birthright, and I think after everything you've been through, you can handle it now. The two of you, as well as your mother, are the last of your kind, a blood. Your lineage follows an unbroken line to the old gods themselves. And if you call upon them, you might just find they're actually listening. They won't work miracles for you. But their blessings can be quite useful in the right circumstance. Why don't you ask the goddess Ashtor for her aid in dealing with that barrier over there?
She believes in our purpose. After all this time, it's still just as beautiful as the first time I laid eyes on it. It's hard to believe Lilith and Caretaker brought this place all the way from Transia. Of course, it was no coincidence that they wound up so close to Salem. This area is particularly attuned to the forces of magic. That's why the Elder God's influence was so prevalent here. And why our sanctuary here has remained all but impregnable over the centuries. <laughs> and now I'm rambling on like an old Sorcerer Supreme. Why don't you come see me in the library tomorrow night? Oh, and... Let's keep this just between the two of us for now. I'm afraid Sarah... Uh, caretaker... Isn't ready to see me yet. Good night, Hunter. Good girl, Charlie. Hunter, please come to the forge at your earliest convenience. Again, that's Hunter to the forge. Thank you. Uh, strange out. See, Hunter, you're so much more than a weapon. You're fun. Hunter, just in time. His royal weirdness and I were deciding what to do with that nasty little Hydra gift box you found. Ah, yes. The spooky crate? The very one. Though it is far from any mere container, I assure you. I am detecting powerful emanations from inside. If this is a sign of what Hydra is after, I fear we are all in grave danger. My offer still stands. I could fly the thing up and nuke it in orbit. Only way to be sure. Or we could open it, Tony, and perhaps use the mystical energies I sense inside to our advantage. Yeah, I heard a we in there. <laughs> Green goopy gamma serums are one thing. I'm not opening boxes full of mummy curses. You don't have to. Hunter, if you'll allow me. Your second funeral, boss. Whatever artifact is inside, it's better off in our hands. What have you got for me, boss? Big analyzing. Take your pick, Hunter. Don't forget to write. Hydra is now working to acquire mystical antiquities, then our situation is very dire indeed. We need to find a way to gain the upper hand. And you think you can do it with whatever's in the container? Tony has one of the greatest scientific minds that I've ever seen, 
I, of course, have an unparalleled understanding of the mystic arts. I have no doubt that we can find a way to research whatever we find in there and have it work in our favor. I just wonder what it could be. I hope the two of you create something powerful. I want to stop Lilith quickly and decisively. As I said, I'm sure it can help us. I just need to convince Tony to set his ego aside. His discomfort with the esoteric nature of the Arcane might be a problem. But Tony's eccentricities aside, I know you can make this work. Right now, with the sanctum out of my reach, I'm fighting with one hand tied behind my back. It, metaphorically, that is. If I can find items to research, I can give the Midnight Suns every possible advantage over Lilith and her disciples. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Me too, Hunter. Now, all this talk is going nowhere unless we can get this container open and study what's inside. Step up to the anvil, Hunter. It doesn't bite. You have my undivided attention. In this reality, anyway. By the hoary hosts of Hoggoth, I, I can hardly believe it. What? Is it worse than you expected? No, it's totally unexpected. It's the Eternity Dagger. This was in a place of honor in my bedchamber in the Sanctum for years. The Sanctum Sanctorum is no common domicile to be burglared. These barbarians have no idea what they possessed. Or perhaps they did. Maybe these artifacts are exactly what Faustus and my mother were after to begin with. A distressing thought. If they had my dagger, then who knows what others of my priceless possessions have passed through their greedy fingers. The cube of nothingness. The tear of Provia, and most worrisome of all. Your toothbrush? You, uh, had a little coffee thing going on this morning with your breath? Oh, Tony. Sorry. Doc's right, Hunter. I drank three glasses of holy water just to walk through the Sanctum's front door. The place is like a doomsday vault for all sorts of supernatural nastiness. We need to put a lid on this mess. Pronto. I believe Carol is already working on it. At last. Now that this artifact has been returned to its proper owner, we shall see if we can make use of the mystic forces contained within. These were relatively common at one point in history. Hey Hunter, uh, got a sec to spare? <laughs> 